morning, thank you. It's an honor to be here. Um, I would like to tackle the question of whether we should treat active injecting drug users. And I'd really like to talk today about the utility of using antiviral treatment as prevention in this population. Um, this is work that I've been doing in conjunction with Matt Hickman, Peter Vickerman, Graham Foster, Sharon Hutchinson, and David Goldberg. So this is a slide of hepatitis C antiviral prevalence in England and Wales um, between the 90s up until 2006 among non-recent and recent initiates. So you can see that in the 90s, the hepatitis C prevalence um, reduced, but since 2000, not only have those reductions not been sustained, but in fact, the prevalence has increased, especially among the recent initiates. So this is a huge problem among active injecting drug users. As you've heard today, there is treatment for hepatitis C, antiviral treatment currently, peginephrine and ribavirin is effective between 50 and 80 percent depending on the genotype. And as you've heard, it's approved under the NHS guidelines, it's cost effective according to NICE, and active injecting drug users are eligible for treatment currently. However, less than 1 percent of active IDUs are currently being treated. So, why is that the case? Well, there is potential concern about compliance and um, reinfection in this population. And um, so that's been used kind of as an excuse to maybe not treat this population. But what has the evidence actually shown? Well, the limited evidence that's available says that actually injection drug users achieve similar sustained viral response and success, treatment success rates and similar compliance rates to X or non-injecting drug users. And small studies have reported that there's little reinfection after successful treatment. But you know, these studies are small, they're underpowered, they're probably subject to um, selection bias. So actually there's not a lot of information out there. But still, there's this reluctance, and so there aren't that many studies being done, so we have this catch-22 situation. So what we wanted to do was actually investigate the potential theoretical benefit of treating this population. So many of you may be aware that there's emerging interest within the fields of HIV prevention of using antiretroviral treatment as a way to prevent HIV transmission. Our hypothesis was that antiviral treatment could be used the same way to possibly prevent hepatitis C transmission amongst injecting drug users. So we wanted to use a model to, ask, to answer these questions. Can antiviral treatment be used as primary prevention in this population despite the potential risk for reinfection after successful treatment? And could the levels of treatment that we would need in order to really reduce prevalence and have an effect in this population, are those treatment rates feasible and are they realistic? So we set up a mathematical model and we were tracking the transmission of hepatitis C among the active injecting drug user population. So we started with um, uninfected IDUs and those could become infected. And then some of those who are infected could be put on antiviral treatment. Those who successfully clear the disease, would, we would then allow for reinfection after that clearance. And for those who failed to clear the disease after treatment, they would not be allowed to be re-treated. And the outcome measure that we were interested in is to actually look at the potential impact of antiviral treatment on hepatitis C prevalence amongst these active injecting drug users. So here's an example of some of our results, and these were surprising. We were really surprised by this. So this is the relative prevalence reduction at 10 years for varying treatment rates and three different baseline prevalences. So on the x-axis, this is baseline chronic prevalence, and we've chosen 20, 40, and 60%. And here we mean active infection prevalence, not antibody prevalence. So for example, a 40% baseline chronic prevalence would be about a 55% antibody prevalence. Uh, we, also mean, we also mean baseline is an untreated endemic chronic infection prevalence, and we assume that there are endemic levels of other prevention interventions, such as opiate substitution therapy and needle and syringe programs. So the y-axis here is the relative prevalence reduction at 10 years. 
So a 50% relative prevalence reduction would mean that our original prevalence would have halved. Okay, 100% relative prevalence reduction means that we've essentially cleared the disease from the population. So the higher the relative prevalence reduction, the better we're doing at 10 years. The three treatment rates that I'm showing in this plot are 10 per thousand injecting drug users annually, 20 per thousand, and 40 per thousand. Okay, so imagine that we have a thousand injecting drug users in our population, and we have a 20% prevalence, so 200 of those are infected. If we treat 10 of those per year, what can we expect to see at 10 years? Well, here in the light gray, we can see that at 10 years, we would expect a 30% reduction in prevalence. Treating just 40 of those per year, we would see by 10 years, we would expect over a 70% reduction in prevalence. These are substantial and swift reductions in prevalence with relatively low levels of treatment. But okay, that's a, that's a low prevalence situation. You can see that at higher prevalence scenarios, 40% and 60%, we get a reduced effect. So we get less reduction than we see at the lower prevalence levels for the same level of treatment. But even with these low levels of treatment, for example, for treating 40 people per year in our population of 1,000, if we have a 60% prevalence, so 600 of those are infected, then we can see that we would still expect to see a 30% reduction in 10 years. So we were surprised by these reductions. They were much larger than we were expecting. So just to, just to drive the point home, as an example, let's say we have 4,000 injecting drug users and we have a 20% prevalence, so 800 of those are infected. If we treat 10 per thousand per year, so if we treat 40 in our population of 4,000 every year, then by 10 years we would expect a 30% reduction from 20% to 14% prevalence. If we treat 20 per thousand, so 80 in our population of 4,000, then we would expect a 62% reduction by 10 years. So a 20, from 20% 20 prevalence today to 8% just in 10 years. So these are substantial reductions. If we're in a higher prevalence scenario, we have 40%, so in our population of 4,000 IDUs, we have 1,600 that are infected, and we treat 20 per thousand, so 80 in our population of 4,000, then we could expect a 30% reduction by 2020. And if we treat 40 per thousand, so 160 in our population of 4,000, then we can expect nearly a 60% reduction in 10 years, from 40% to 17% prevalence. Okay, so these are swift and substantial reductions with achievable and modest levels of treatment. But okay, so the previous slides I've been showing you have been at one snapshot in time, in 10 years. But what can we expect through time? Okay, so this slide shows you for one treatment rate, 20 per thousand, treating 20 per thousand a year, what can we expect? And the gray is at five years, the dashed line is at 10 years, and the dark solid blue line is at 20 years. Now this axis is baseline chronic prevalence, and the y-axis is the same as in the previous slide, percent reduction in prevalence. So again, a 50% reduction would mean that our original baseline prevalence would be halved by that time point. So just in general, if you look at the left-hand side of the slide for our low prevalence areas, you can see that even within five and 10 years at this treatment rate, you can expect swift and substantial reductions in prevalence. Now at higher chronic prevalence levels on this side of the plot, the reductions are less, but still within kind of 10 to 20 years, you can see measurable reductions in prevalence with this treatment rate, 20 per thousand IDUs. Okay, so again with our example, if we have 4,000 injecting drug users and we're at 40% prevalence, we have 1,600 of those infected, and we treat 20 per thousand, so 80 in our population of 4,000, then we can expect a 15% reduction in five years, a 30% reduction in 10 years, and our prevalence is nearly halved in 20 years, from 40% today to 